So we did, we looked at, we looked at Ziff, we seen that in the endowment, Hakalai, Dark, Yeshimon, a desolation, and we determined that, you know, spiritually speaking, we, we see here, you know, a battle, a battlement or, you know, a battle that takes place in darkness, you know, right before desolation, you know, and so then verse two told us that Saul arose and went down to the wilderness of Ziff, you know, so Saul goes and enter into this. And, and so spiritually speaking, what we're being told is that, you know, uh, when this transpire, that there will be, that Saul will arise. Saul or Saul speaks to our desires. That's what his name means. His name means, you know, desired or asked for, you know, and your desires will always try to snuff out your love for Elohim. Right. You know, uh, you know, when your desires are ruling over over you you know even as saul or saul was ruling over israel and so here it is we see him going down there to him and it says saul pitched in the hill of hakilah you know so we see saul or the desires pitching actually pitching his tent in the hill of darkness you know um, which is before a desolation or yes you know and it says by the way, um, you know, but David abode in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him in, into the wilderness. So he was already in the wilderness, and he's looking. He sees Saul's coming. Saul coming, you know. So he wasn't caught off guard. You know, spiritually speaking, a wilderness is a place is a very dry place, you know. So it's a place without water, and water speaks the truth. So we speak, seeing a, a place without truth. You know, and so you start putting this together, you start seeing a very um, dark picture, you know, a battle that takes place in dark before desolation, in time of darkness, you know, a place of darkness, you know, uh, and in the wilderness, you know, i.e. a place without truth, you know, or that truth is lacking, you know, and of course the wilderness always speaks to our trials, I will also always speak to our trials and tribulations that we go through for Yah. You know, now verse five told us that David had came to the place where Saul had pitched, and David beheld the place where Saul lay, and Abner, the son of Ner, the captain of his host, you know, was and the other men were around the bottom. You know, and Abner, his name speaks to the father of a lamp or or a light, and Nair speaks to a lamp. And this is important to know because he is like the head guy that's in charge over the king, over the king's protection, I should say. You know, and just in semblance, you know, spiritually speaking, he represents a uh, a light unto the king. Which is not really a light, kind of a false light, if you would, pseudo light. You know, even as Satan transforms himself into an angel of light, you know, while they're pitched here in darkness before a desolation, you know, in a time of abandonment to try to snuff out the beloved of Elohim who've done absolutely nothing. You know, um, we have to keep that in mind that, you know, Saul was trying to destroy. David, not because he done anything, but simply because of the anointing and the prophecy concerning his life. You know, David, you know, was a model citizen and done much to actually help Saul and was even his son-in-law. You know, so um, you have to be able to see this picture because it plays an important part in what's to come and in um in the last days I mean, because scripture even as our messiah is is the same yesterday today and forever you know it speaks to what was what is and what is to come and so even though we're reading about ancient history we're also reading about now today and reading about what's to come 
you know, and scripture does speak about a time such as this, which we'll get into later. But, you know, let us also consider Abishai. You know, it says in verse 6, then, uh, then after David and said unto Achimelech the Hittite and to Abishai, the son of Zariah, uh, brother to Yoab, saying, who will go down with me to, Sa to Saul to the camp? You know, so he asks both of them, and Abishai says, I will go down with you. And it's just interesting that it's Abishai who goes with him. Because Abishai name means gift of my father. You know, um, and you see throughout 1 Samuel, you see this combination of David and a gift together. Mm -hmm. You know, where else did we see this? Say again, Jonathan. Jonathan, yes. Um, Brother Jonathan, Jonathan uh, Saul's son, you know, who made a covenant with, with David. You know, we see that um, Jonathan's name means gift of Yah. Mm -hmm. And so here it is, we see this combination of the beloved of Elohim with the gift of Elohim. You know, and here it is, we see Abishai, meaning the gift of my father, we see a gift also alongside of David, you know, and this is, you know, constantly pointing us, pointing to us that the gifts that we receive of Elohim is for the beloved of Elohim, and it's for those who who love Elohim. It's not for our own desires. It's not for Saul, you know, even though Jonathan was his very own son, he still chose David. And entered into covenant with him not once, not twice, but three times. Amen. Amen. You know, and so this is an important um, point to you know to ponder. You know, because here it is, we see again, you know, David with a gift by his side. You know, so the gifts that we receive of Elohim is not for your desires. It's not for your Saul, your Saul that's trying to rule over you. You know, it is for be the beloved of Elohim, the, the part of you that loves Elohim and loves his people. Amen. Amen. You know, and he so happens to be the son of Zeruiah, whose name means wounded or pain or tribulation of Yah. You know, and scripture speaks of, in the last days of a dark time before um, a desolation, you know, concerning a tribulation of Yah mm -hmm. upon the earth, does it not? Yeah. You know, so the more things change, the more they stay the same. Amen. Amen. Let me have my next reader read verses 7 through 14. So David and Abishai came to the people by night, and behold, Saul, Saul lay sleeping within the trench, and his spear stuck in the ground at his bolster. But Abner and the people lay round about him. Then said Abish Abishai to David, Elohim hath delivered thine enemy into thine hand this day. Now therefore let us smite him. I pray thee with the spear even to the earth at once, and I will not smite him the second time. And David said to Abishai, destroy him not, for who can stretch forth his hands against Yahuwah's anointed and be guiltless? David said, furthermore, as Yahuwah liveth, Yahuwah shall smite him. For his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. Yahuwah forbid that I should stretch forth mine hand against Yahuwah's anointed. But I pray thee, take thou now the spear that is at his bolster, and the cruise of water, and let us go. So David took the spear and the cruise of water from Saul's bolster, and they got them away, and no man saw it, nor knew it, neither awake for they were all asleep because a deep sleep from Yahuwah was fallen upon them. Then David went over to the other side and stood on the top of the hill afar off, a great space between them. And David cried to the people and to Abner, the son of Ner, saying, Answerest not thou not, Abner? Then Abner answered and said, Who art thou that criest to the king? Hallelujah. Okay, so... We see David and Abishai, you know, coming to the people by night, 
you know, and Saul laying in the trench and everyone's asleep, you know, and Abishai, you know, says to David, Elohim have delivered thine enemy into thine hand this day. And surely he had. You know, um, now, it's, you know, it always uh, it amuses me what uh, Abishai says next. He says, now, therefore, let me smite him, I pray thee, with the spear, um, even to the earth at once, and I will not smite him the second time. That's only, all I need is one time. That's all I need. Just, just give me one shot at him, you know. Uh, I, won't, I won't do it twice, you know. Um, but David says, destroy him not. You know, and I know Abishai is like, but this guy is chasing us all around the countryside, and y'all keep on delivering them into our hands, and you keep letting them go. Yeah. You know, this is our enemy. You do know he's trying to kill you, right? right. You know, um, see, but this is the epitome of what Yahshua teaches to love your enemy yeah. Yeah. and pray for them who despite them. Yes, you know. Amen. Amen. You know, this, this epitomizes that, you know, and he's. Um, so David tells Abishai, destroy him not. For who can stretch forth his hand against Yahuwah's anointed and be guiltless? No one. Not to mention that David was one of Yah's anointed himself. Right. You know, so even even doubly not, you know, for him. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, you cannot put forth your hand against Yahuwah's anointed and be guiltless, you know, for, for no reason. You know, and so David continues and says, Yahuwah shall smite him, or his day shall come to die, or he shall descend into battle and perish. But Yahuwah forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against Yahuwah's anointed. Not going to happen. Right. And this is the way, this is the attitude that we supposed to have. Amen? Yes. This is the attitude that we're supposed to have. And, you know, in the latter days, we're going to get an opportunity to have it. In the latter yeah. days, you know, we're going to find ourselves in a position whereby Yah's people are going to be trying to destroy Yah's people. Yeah. You know, and this is a very important, you know, point to understand because when it happens, you know, folks aren't going to know what to do because they're not going to be familiar with the word. But the word teaches us. You know, and this is one of the places, places yes. that it does so. Mm -hmm. You know, Yah's people will be persecuting Yah's people. Mm -hmm. You know, and we are to have the same attitude mm -hmm. if we're beloved of Elohim, even as David was the beloved of Elohim. We're to have the same attitude. We're, have, we're called to have a heart like unto Yah. You know, and we are called to forbid that we stretch forth our hand against Yahuwah's anointed, even when they're wrong. Even in light of them trying to kill us. You understand? Yes. Sound crazy, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but this is what Yahshua taught. This is what Yahshua taught, love thine enemies. You know, see, even though Saul was David's enemy, David Still love Saul. Yeah. You know, he, he think about it. He had been, you know, he had been ministering to him since he was a youth. He had come up in the ranks of his army. He even married his daughter. He was best friends with his son. Even entered into covenant with him three times, to say to say the least. You know, so he was very connected to the family. You know, and he had love for Saul. But it just wasn't reciprocated. But nevertheless, that didn't change the fact that Saul was chosen by Yah and anointed, you know, for his service. Amen? Amen. And this is what we have to understand because when it takes place in, in our world and in our day and time, you know, so many people, you know, you know, today grow up as I did, where you taught them somebody hit you, you hit them back. Right. Well, this is not what Yahshua teaches. That's right. Amen. Amen. You know, and so we have to come to grips that we were taught wrong. Yes. You know, and allow Scripture to lead and guide us. That's right. Right. Yeah. 
It says in verse 12, so David took the spear and the cruise of water from Saul's bolster. You know, and because a deep sleep from Yahuwah was falling upon them. You know, and, and spiritually speaking, you know, we we see we see the spirit which can speak to, you know, uh it can speak to prayer, it can also speak to the word in a sense and, and the cruise of water, Yah's truth, or you know, it's counsel, you know, good counsel or Yali counsel, you know, and it says Yah put a deep sleep upon them. You know, so they're going to be in a state of sleep. They're, that means they're not going to be able to hear the truth. They're not going to be able to, to see what's right. You know, because they're going to be as one that's asleep. The spirit of slumber is going to be upon them. And so no matter how much we try to convince them that what we say is true, they're not going to be able to hear us and they're not going to be able to see our point. Right, right. So that's that's important to understand, you know, um, for a spell, that's how it's going to be. You know, in verse 14 tells us, and I be cried unto the people, and Abner, the son of Nair, saying, Answer is thou not Abner? Why is he calling out to Abner? He's calling out to Abner because he was the captain of the host. It was his responsibility to keep the king safe. Take note what he says in verse 15. And Dabi said to Abner, Art not thou a valiant man? And who is like to thee in Israel? Wherefore then hast thou not killed the, the Lord the king? But there came one of the people to destroy the king, thy Lord. This thing is not good that thou hast done. As Yahuwah liveth, ye are worthy to die, because ye have not kept your master, Yahuwah's anointing. And in all actuality, you know, this was a type of curse on Abner, yeah. and later on, he would die. Yeah. You know, um, due to some extenuating circumstances, nonetheless. You know, it continues on to say, and now see where the king's spear is, the cruise of water that was at his bolster. And Saul knew David's voice and said, is this thy voice, my son, David? And David said, it is my voice, my lord, O king. He said, Wherefore do of my Lord thus pursue after his servant? For what have I done? Or what evil is in my hand? Now therefore I pray thee, let my Lord the king hear the words of his servant. If Yahuwah have stirred thee up against me, let him accept an offering. But if they be the children of men, cursed be they before Yahuwah. For they have driven me out this day from abiding in the inheritance of Yahuwah, saying, Go serve other gods. Mm -hmm. The implications of this on, you know, on future generations in the, in the last days is that they're going to drive the true believers from out of the midst of other would-be believers. And they're going to be thinking that they're doing the right thing. Right. Just like these Ziphites who were betraying David. They thought they were doing the right thing because Saul was the rightful king. Even though King David was anointed king and he was prophesied to become king, he was not yet king. And so they went and they told the current king, Saul, where he was. You know, Unquestionably, they thought they were going to receive some type of reward and probably did. But the point that I'm making is that your desires will try to rule over your love for Elohim. And if you're not careful, it will extinguish your love for Elohim. You know, all you got to do for those of us who have a little age on us, all you have to do is look back and see, you know, you know, how many times we done what we wanted to do instead of doing what y'all wanted us to yeah. do. Your, your desires yeah. will ex extinguish your love for Elohim if you allow it to. Yeah. You know, and so we don't want to let that happen. Amen? Amen. You know, and so it says, what have I done? What evil is in my hand? I, he's done nothing. And we're not going to have to do anything either. 
You know, in the last days, we're not going to have to do anything. They're going to seek us out. Mm -hmm. And they're going to they're going to seek to do us harm mm -hmm. just for being us. Right. Mm -hmm. For our love for Elohim. You know, this is all that's going to be required. Oh, you love them? Okay, well, we're going to persecute you. Right. We're going to see just how much you love them. And they're going to drive us out from within their midst. You know, and as it's, David says here, saying, go serve other gods. You know, the thing is, is they will be serving other gods. Yeah. Yet they may be thinking they're serving Yah, right. but they won't be. You know, the ones who are truly serving Yah is going to look like the ones that's not serving Yah. You know, and this is the way it looked during David's time. You know, we have um, verse 20. It says, now, therefore, let not my blood fall to the earth before the face of Yahuwah. For the king of Israel has come to seek a flea. As when one do a hunt of partridge in the mountains. You know, in other words, he's saying, you know, I'm nothing. Why are you gathering 3,000 men to come after little old me? I'm nothing. What did I, what did I, I haven't done anything. I, there's no evil being found in my hand. You know, I'm not bothering you. I'm just trying to live my life. Right. You know, and here it is. You come seeking me out as if I'm some type of, you know, criminal. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm as a flea. You come out to seek a flea? You know, as a, as one doer for partridge in the mountains. Now, this is, uh, this speaks to a practice that the kings used to do. They used to go hunt partridges. You know, and it was quite the challenge to catch one, you know, and so this is what's being depicted here. You know, that challenge that it was to catch that partridge. But the way that they would do it is they would go and they would beat the bushes, you know, and, and, and the partridge would, would fly and take off. And then, you know, they'll watch it and see where it lands. And then they'll go beat those bushes and they'll just keep doing this until the partridge gets so exhausted that it can't even fly off anymore. And they can just about go and just grab it in their hands. You know, and so part of what David is saying is you're wearing me out, man. I'm tired of running from you. You're wearing me out. You know, and so we have to understand the implications of this for those in the last days. They will be wearing us out. They'll be wearing us out. You know, and in the mountains speak to in the high places, you know, where the, the higher up you go, the closer you get to Yah. Right. So um, as one do a pun of partridge in the mountains speaks to as one does look for those in the kingdom of Elohim. You know, and this is exactly what they're going to be doing. They're going to be persecuting those partridges in the mountains, if you would, those those um, partridges is a type of bird, which, which um, spiritually speaking, speaks to a, a rationale, a type of thinking, you know, um, that is heavenly. Hence, it's in the mountains, you know. So it's a heavenly type of thinking, you know, a rational type of thinking that is that is um, that is heavenly by nature, you know. And this is this is these are going to be the ones that's going to be hunted. You know, and when we consider Revelations, you know, 13, 4 through 8, which which uh, can be likened to this time, you know, we, we find that something very similar was happening. It says in verse 4, and they worship the dragon. Now, I want you to understand that spiritually speaking, a dragon can speak to uh, uh, something like a, a deception, a great deception or, or um, a big lie, if you would. You know, this, this spiritually speaking, this is a type of dragon, you know, and if you if you consider that from that perspective, you can see a dragon in our midst right now. Yes, it now, it says, and they worship the dragon and it goes on to say, which gave power unto the beast. Now, the beginning of Revelation speaks about this beast that rises up out of the seas, you know, now. M, our time likens it can uh, is likened unto um, these passages, then we can expect to see a beast 
rise up pretty soon. It says, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast. You know, so if the dragon can speak to a lie, you know, or, or deception, then we see that the deception is given, is going to give power unto some type of beast. And that the people will worship the beast. Well, I'm here to tell you, like, you know, spiritually speaking, it can be said that people are worshiping the dragon right now. Because if the dragon is a type of deception, you know, and to worship is to submit to. You have many people who are submitting to the deception now. Hence, it can be said that they're worshiping the dragon. You know, and it goes on to say, which gave power to the beast, which we don't, you know, in our day and time, we don't see a beast as of yet, you know, but it, it says, and they worship the beast, you know, so if they worship the dragon, it's, it's a good chance they're going to worship the beast too. Right. And then it goes on to say, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? You know, so that tells us that it's going to be like insurmountable odds. It's going to be like insurmountable odds. You know, you're going to feel like you're going against the whole world. And the truth of the matter is, you'll be going against the whole world. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. those of us who are of Yah, we are not of the world. Yes. Amen? Yes. You know, and those of us who are friends with the world are in enmity with Elohim. Amen? Right. So, yes, it's going to feel like you're going against the world because you're going to be going against the world. You know, and it's, it says, who is like unto the beast? None. None will be like unto him. Who is able to make war of him? None. Except for Yah. Right. You know, that's why we have to be on the right side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Verse 5. It says, and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy. Mm -hmm. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against Elohim. Mm -hmm. To blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. Okay, so who is he talking about? Absolutely, he's talking about the saints, the ones who profess his name, the ones who are his tabernacle. Because the tabernacle is a temporary dwelling place, amen? amen. Scripture speaks of these flesh bodies as tabernacles, right? You know, and these flesh bodies are supposed to be the dwelling places of Elohim. Amen? Amen. You know, so, and we also profess his name. Yeah. You know, and it says, and them that dwell in heaven, does not scripture say that we are to be seated in heavenly places? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? You know, and so, if you look at this, you can see this speaks directly to the saints. Hence, the next verse says, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Yeah. And to overcome them. Right. See, it's the saints who has his name. It's the saints who are his tabernacle. Yeah. It's the saints who dwell with him in heavenly places. Yeah. And it's the saints who will be made war against. Mm -hmm. Who the beast will make war against. Mm -hmm. And will overcome them. You know, and I know that sounds terrible, you know, but scripture also teaches that, you know, it'll be a blessing to die at some point. Mm -hmm. It even goes on to say that some people will be seeking to die, but won't be able to. Right. So, as terrible as it look and sound in the physical and the spiritual, there's a beautiful picture. Yeah. Because the worst the enemy can do is kill us. Yeah. But we serve an heir that can and will raise us up. Amen. Thank you, you know, we just have to stay steadfast. We just have to stay doing his will, way, and purposes. Amen. 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 You know, we can't make friends with the world. No. Because as soon as we do, we're at enmity with Elohim. Mm -hmm. You can't be have one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom of Elohim. You know, that's being lukewarm. You know what Yahshua said with those that are lukewarm. Right. Absolutely. It's beauty out of his mouth. Yeah. 
And it says the power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. In verse 8, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Now, I want you to consider, you know, the spiritual aspect of that because we're talking about the saints, those who confess his name, those who are his tabernacle, and those who are seated with him in heavenly places. These are the saints. Amen. These are those that are the, of the kingdom of Hashemayim or the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. You know, and so we're in heavenly places. So we're heavenly type beings, even though we're here on the earth. But it tells us, and all that dwell upon the earth. Now we're speaking about the peoples of the world. Amen. So, you know, scripture is now contrasting, you know, the the children of Hashemayim or the children of the kingdom of, of, hell, of heaven against those peoples of the world that dwell upon the earth. And it says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You know, so the ones who dwell in heavenly places, the ones who are in the kingdom of Hashemayim, the kingdom of heaven, as Yahshua uh, taught, they're going to be the ones that's going to be persecuted because they won't worship him. They won't bow to him. And those that dwell upon the earth will. And now my next read, read verses 21 through 25. Then said Saul, I have sinned. Return my son David, for I will no more do thee, do thee harm, because my soul was precious in thine eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. And David answered and said, Behold, the king's spear, and let one of the young men come over and fetch it. Yahuwah rendered to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. For Yahuwah delivered thee to, into my hand today, but I would not stretch forth my hand against Yahuwah's anointed. And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in my eyes, so let my life be much set by in the eyes of Yahuwah and let him deliver me out of all tribulations. Uh, tribulation. Uh, thine, then Saul said to David, Blessed be thou, my son David. Thou shalt both do great things and also shall still prevail. So David went on his way and Saul returned to his place. All right, isn't this something? You know, the same guy trying to kill him also blesses him. You know, um, but take take um, heed to verse 21. It says, then says Saul, I have sinned. He recognized that he sinned. Mm -hmm. And at some point, the people who are doing us wrong will recognize they have sinned. Yeah. You know, and he says, return, my son, that means well, I will no more do thee harm because my soul was precious in thine eyes this day. You know, they'll see that they sinned because even when we have an opportunity to do the wrong, we won't. They'll realize that they played the fool and have erred exceedingly, even as Saul did. You know, and it says, um, Nabi prayed. And, and stated that Yahuwah rendered to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness. For Yahuwah, um, he judges a man's heart, so he will render to everyone his righteousness and his faithfulness. And verse 24 said, And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in mine eyes, so let my life be much set by Right in the eyes of Yahuwah. This is the attitude that we're to have, folks. We're to have this attitude, you know, that our lives be much set by in the eyes of Yahuwah, yeah. not that of man. Right. And let Yahuwah deliver us out of all tribulation. And we're going to go through, you know, those are the latter days, you know, um, um, you know, if it be us, you know, we'll have to go through a tribulation. Amen. 
Yes. You know, but God would deliver us out of it all. Yes. Yeah. You know, even as he delivers David. And Saul again says, blessed be thou my son David. So here it is, the enemy is blessing us. You know, because they're, they're confused. Yes. You know, um, they have love for us, but at the same time, they're, you know, they're trying to kill us. Mm. Yeah, strange times, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it goes on to say, and thou shalt do great things and also shall still prevail. And this is can be said of the beloved of Elohim in the last days. You will do great things, you know, even as Daniel says that, you know, God's people will do great exploits. And even though we're persecuted, even though we're killed all the day long as sheep onto the slaughter, you know, we still will prevail. You know, and again, verse 24, epitomize the attitude that we're supposed to have, you know, to let our lives be much set by in the eyes of Yahuwah and let him deliver us. We're not to deliver ourselves. Yeah. You know, and you know, because those who seek to save their lives shall lose them, and right. those who lose them for Yah's name's sake shall save them. Yeah. You know, so we're to allow Yah to do all that. Yeah. You know, and always, always, always remember Revelation 13, 9 and 10. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Mm -hmm. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Right. Here is the patience of the faith for the saints. Um, you know, this is what we have to keep in mind, you know, because it's, it's just, you know, almost second nature. Um, it is second nature, carnal nature, you know, um, that, you know, someone's trying to, to kill us. We want to kill them. They want to captivate us. We want to put them in the captivity, but that's not the way that's not Yah's way. So I encourage you to have the patience of your you know, yeah. that's all I have for you today. Prayer was a blessing. Yeah. Yeah.